Hi everyone and welcome back to Fully Playable Games. So on today's video we are going to be going through uh, some different pickups that I've made. So some that have just come sort of from various places but I've also got a whole load that I've got from a recent boot fair trip. Uh, but there isn't any footage from the actual boot fair because I actually went there to sell um, and it was only the fact that I knew a couple of people there that were also selling um, that yeah I was able to get a, a couple of new bits for the collection as well. Um, but first off the first couple of bits that we've got to look through uh, actually come from a charity shop run that I'd done uh, so yeah I, mean, I popped in there to see what they had um, and yeah managed to get a couple of really good bits and the first one being a PS4 uh, it comes complete with all of the cables the controller the whole lot um, it does work the only problem I found with it is is that it has been opened um, so yeah whether it's been open to be cleaned or whatever uh, but as I say I have tested it it does all work um, and what I am actually going to do is this one is actually the, um, the the matte black one so it's got both sides are sort of matte black I'm going to keep this one in the collection we did recently get one from uh, Swan Lee Boot Fair um, I can't remember when that video went out but um, obviously I picked it up and it was an absolute deluge so I've not actually had a chance to look at that one yet um, but what I'm probably going to do is I am going to open it up give it a full service make sure that it's working um, and then probably just sell that one on um, and then yeah what we'll do is we'll give this one a bit of a clean um, and then add this to the collection so then I've got the um, the other variant of the PS3 that I want uh, PS4 that I wanted uh, so for the PS4 we paid £20 for that one, looking it up online um, it goes for £90 at CEX and £85 on eBay so yeah a really really good pick up there. Uh, then also managed to get a game and a sort of accessory, uh, so the game we got was uh, Tiger Woods PGA Tour 13. Uh, anytime I see these I'll always pick them up uh, just because I'm trying to sort of put together uh, some sort of series uh, within the sort of the individual consoles. Um, yeah this one as per normal with the uh, Tiger Woods of this sort of era they were all right um, I just don't like them when you're sort of um, having to sort of flick around with the um, the sort of uh, thumbsticks. Uh, so with this one we paid a pound for this one goes for 150 at CEX and four pound on eBay Then next up we got a Nintendo DS uh, Edge flash cart uh, so this one actually has a um, An SD card in it as well uh, and basically what it does is you load uh, ROMs onto the SD card um, and you can basically play them on the, uh, the DS or the 2DS uh, I think this one only works with the with DS games and not the 3DS. Sorry, I didn't mean 2DS. Uh, this one doesn't work with 3DS games, I don't think. Um, so for this one, paid a pound again for this. Uh, not listed at CEX, but goes for £10 on eBay. And then the final bit that we got from CEX was a box accessory. Um, and this was one... It's, I'll be honest, it's never going to get used. Um, it was purely bought the fact that it was boxed. And that is a uh, Xbox 360 Connect. So, yeah, I've got so many Connects at the moment uh, that it is just beyond funny. Uh, but when I saw that there was a boxed one there, um, I did sort of aim to pick it up uh, because we don't actually have a boxed one in the collection. And yeah, just wanted to get hold of it and add it in with the uh, the Xbox 360 consoles that we've got. So as you can see from the sticker, we paid ten pounds for this. Uh, looking it up online, uh, it goes for about nine pounds on eBay. Uh, I couldn't find a box version listed on CEX, so yeah, there's no CEX price for it. Uh, and what is good is it does actually come with the Connect Adventures uh, game inside as well, so it is complete, which is really good. Right, so getting into a couple of the eBay pickups. Uh, first one that we've got is actually a uh, box, and that is Mario Kart Super Circuit on the Game Boy Advance. So, yeah, I saw this come up as an auction, um, and yeah, watched it, 
once it come to towards the end, um, I actually noticed that no one had bid on it. So I mean, I chucked a bid in with about an hour to go, and then yeah, got the alert to say that I'd actually won it. So yeah, really chuffed. Won it for ninety nine p. So with the delivery, uh, paid four pounds and thirty eight p. Um, I think we, we've got the cart for this, but the actual cart that we've got is a bit banged up. Uh, so I might look to upgrade that in the future. But the uh, the box itself is a bit dinged up. It's not pristine, but once we put it into a box protector, it will be really good. It does come with all the manuals inside. So uh, what I'm going to do is I've got um, some Game Boy Advanced uh, Game Boy Advance box inserts. So I'm going to put that in there with the cart, um, and then as I say, when I can, I will buy um, an upgraded one. Uh, looking it up online, the boxes normally sell for about £12. So, yeah, we've got a really good deal on that one. Uh, oh, wow. It's not actually, it's literally only got it on that top bit. Uh, right, so next up, uh, we have got a bag. So, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, uh, you'll know whenever I see a good uh, console bag, uh, I normally tend to pick them up. This one in particular, I have been wanting for probably close to about four years now. Um, I originally saw uh, saw one of the resellers that I know uh, actually wears one around the normal Sunday boot fair. And yeah, I have been dying to get hold of it, but he just wouldn't sell it. And I, start, I put in a safe search on eBay um, to sort of alert me when they come up, but they were coming up at stupidly expensive prices. Um, but then this one come up, um, it was it's essentially brand new uh, still in its box the box is a bit battered but the actual bag itself is brand new and that is the ps1 uh, console bag so yeah as i say this was one that i've been wanting to pick up for quite a while but as i say they were just so expensive uh, in used condition just the bag itself uh, you're looking around sort of 70 to 80 pounds um, in this condition uh, you're looking at uh, about £100. So, yeah, really, really chuffed to have this now. Um, we actually ended up... Uh, yeah, ended up... It was an auction. Uh, and I ended up getting it for a total price of £29.99p. So, yeah, really, really happy with that. Got an absolutely stonking deal on it. And as I say, it was a bag that I'd been wanting in the collection for a while. Um, and really glad to finally tick this one off. Okay, so moving on to our next uh, stack of games. These are all going to be uh, brand new games that I've had uh, pre-ordered. And yeah, they've now arrived and I've been uh, eagerly playing some of them. <laughs> so the first one that we've got is actually a limited run game that we've got. So we've recently done a review on the channel for uh, the Rocket Knight Adventures Respark. Uh, Ultimate Edition from Limited Run. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link up in the, one of the corners uh, to that video. If you haven't seen that, go and check that out because I will admit I was really impressed uh, with the game itself. But this one is a, another remake. Uh, and it's actually a remake of, uh, I believe it was a 360 exclusive. Um, and yeah, I wanted to pick up the 360 version. But then once I saw that this was coming out, I then also grabbed this as well. So that is Shadow of the Damned. Uh, this is the uh, Hella Remastered version. Uh, so I will admit, I really enjoyed this. It was one that I was looking forward to getting. Uh, because obviously, wanting the, the Xbox 360 version. Uh, then I saw this one. So yeah, uh, really glad to have this. I think, uh, so it didn't actually take that long to get here, actually. Uh, so we ordered it on the uh, 2nd of July. Um, and it actually arrived... Uh, I believe it was a couple of weeks ago now. So, yeah, this was a really quick turnaround, this one. Uh, I think originally it was due to come in January. Uh, and what actually happened was is the, um, I got the dispatch note for Rocket Knight Adventures. And then, then got the dispatch note for this, but didn't actually clock it. I thought it was still just Rocket Knight, because I wasn't expecting this one until January. Uh, so, yeah, it was a, a nice surprise. Um, and as I say, a really good game. Really enjoyed it. Uh, it's definitely one that I want to sort of play through uh, when I've got a bit more time. Uh, so we paid £30.18p. and As I say, this was a limited run pre-order, so we got it uh, direct from the source. Uh, 
Um, and looking it up online now, they're going for about £85. Um, as per normal with the limited run games, as soon as the pre-order's shut, uh, the price of them skyrockets. So, yeah, anytime I see a game that I do actually want, um, I do tend to sort of just jump on and buy it. Right, <laughs> this next one. Um, so this next game is uh, another PS5 game, but this one actually come from Amazon. And it was probably probably about five or six weeks ago from when you are seeing the video, well, when the video goes live. And I saw someone streaming this, and I'm like, I saw the title of their video, and I'm like, that looks, what the hell is that? So I clicked into it, and basically watched them play through for the, the first sort of hour or so. And immediately, straight after that, I went straight on see sort still there. Went straight on to see if there was a physical version, um, and I actually saw there was a physical version coming out about two weeks later. So I went onto Amazon, pre-ordered it, um, and then, yeah, once it arrived, um, I put it straight in the PS5 and was probably playing it the whole night. And that is Squirrel with a Gun. Uh, this is one of the funniest games. Um, that I have played in a long time. As the title tells you, uh, you play as a squirrel who ends up with a gun. <laughs> and not just one gun, so you start off with a handgun, then you get pick up a shotgun, and I think the third option is a rocket launcher. Uh, but then you can also get things like, you get a little car that you can drive around, um, and while you're driving around, you can still also shoot. It is hilarious. So you'd have seen the footage um, of this as I was playing it and yeah it is one of those games if you haven't played it um, definitely try and get hold of a copy whether it's dirty digital <laughs> or a physical version um, but yeah it is an absolutely superb game it's so funny um, and yeah it was a, it was one of my favourite additions um, to the collection in recent months um, so we actually as I say it was an Amazon pre-order uh, I've paid uh, £22.99p. Uh, looking it up, it goes £18 at CEX um, and £24 on eBay. So, yeah, as I say, definitely look to pick it up if you haven't. <sighs> right, this next one, I am going to say that there may be some people out there that not might not like some of the bits that I've got to say about this next game. And this is a sequel that as soon as I saw it announced in um, one of the PlayStation Directs, I um, immediately went on to see when it was being released. And as soon as I could, I pre-ordered it. And that is Life is Strange Double Exposure. Now, this game has really got me divided because uh, once I when I received it, I once again immediately put it in, uh, spent a couple of hours playing through it. I think I got about... Um, well, no, I think it was about an hour or so I played it initially. Um, got about three quarters of the way through the first chapter. Um, and then I will admit, last uh, since then, uh, so it's probably been about a week and a half, two weeks uh, since I received it, that I, um, I'm filming this part of the video. And ever since, since receiving it, I've just wanted to go back and play it. So literally last night, I was able to sit down and literally devote the whole evening to playing through it um, and I actually did I think mean, I probably started playing about six o'clock um, and then played right through to finish um, and I finished it about sort of half two this morning um, and yeah it was one of the, it's been one of those games that I've just been desperate to get back to play it um, and uh, off the top of my head I can think of five games um, in my whole gaming life that I've had that with um, and actually quite a few of them have been recent games. Uh, so we had um, Still Wakes the Deep. Um, the, uh, what was it? The one, oh, right, give me a minute. I'm going to have to have a look. <laughs> that was it. In Ray of Light. That was the other one. So we've got Still Wake the Deep, In Ray of Light. Uh, the original Life is Strange. Uh, so I actually got that originally on Steam. Uh, and that was a gradual release. So literally the, the night that the the next chapters come out, I immediately jumped on it and literally played through the chapter, completed it that night. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed that. Uh, and then the other one was Fallout 3. 
Uh, that was one that I literally could not put it down uh, when I started playing it. And then we've got this one. So my opinions on it are the, from the story side. It's a really, really good story. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed playing through it. The, I've got two negatives with it. Um, and uh, they are, I feel that they're quite big negatives. Um, so the first one is obviously I'm playing it unpatched because I've not got my PlayStation uh, PS5 plugged into uh, the network um, because when I actually get these games, I actually want to see what they are in their sort of raw raw format i don't want updates or anything like that i want to be able to see what they play like because if it's a case of that i get a game and it's completely broken um on first install and it has to have an update uh, that's something that i want to be able to tell you about um this one it's borderline it really is because um it's there's a lot of um texture popping um it's yeah pretty much every time the camera changes um it's very jarring uh but after a while i sort of got used to that and just accepted it then i think i was playing last night when i was playing chapter four i think it was um there was a part there uh, where I went in to interact with uh, one of the characters and the sound completely went apart from the background music and the basically the the music then uh, the audio that's even down to your footsteps you're talking everything completely died the only way I was re able to go through it was the fact that the subtitles on the screen uh, so it was only once I actually left that area and then come back in did the sound then come back um, but yeah, there was a lot of glitches in it. Um, so it is probably one of those games that does need an update uh, to play properly. But um, from my perspective, it was playable without the update. Uh, so there is that. But for me, and this is where, where I'm probably going to annoy some people or some uh, make some people angry. Um, and for me, it was the politics side of it um and yeah the sort of agendas uh behind it but so and i'm not going to go into it too much but literally within the first sort of 10 minutes um they are essentially forcing you into um a sort of lesbian relationship and it's only after, like, basically you, you say, no, 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 I'm not interested. Oh, no, no, you need to go, you need to go and show. And then it's literally after the conversation, you're then given the opportunity uh, to make it sort of a romantic or a friendship relationship. But there was a couple of instances about that. And a lot of it's been, like, a lot of the cut, like, a lot of the sort of cut scenes and that that you were seeing um, were basically written, assuming that you went like said yes to that relationship um and then obviously there, there are other bits in it i i don't really want to go into it because that's not what the idea of my channel is uh but yeah let, that that really disappointed me considering what the first one was like um and then sort of with this one uh it was yeah it was a bit disappointing but what i will say is as i say i did enjoy playing it uh once i could sort of shut off to all of that essentially being rammed down my throat <laughs> um as i say i really enjoyed the story um i thought about sort of chapter four it sort of went off it jumped the shark up junk jumped the shark a bit but yeah uh it is what it is um and it, it did say at the end um that max will return so it looks like there is going to be a sequel to this uh, that will also bring Max Caulfield back in for a third game. So, yeah, I'll be interested to see where they take that. Um, and, yeah, as I say, it was a game that I did enjoy playing. Um, there were just those couple of bits that I just didn't like about it. Um, and with that as well, because it was a pre-order, uh, we did also get a steelbook for it as well. Um, I'm not going to use the steelbook. Um, I'm literally just going to keep, keep it in that. Uh, the standard box uh, and then it'll go on the shelf uh, but for life is strange we paid 49.99 for that um, it goes for about 45 pounds at cex um, that doesn't include the steelbook 
um, and then with the steelbook on eBay they're going for about £65 so yeah as I say um, it is a game that I enjoyed playing um, it definitely doesn't sort of knock the first one off the top spot for me right so next up we are moving on to a, a switch game uh, and this was another new release i'll be honest i haven't played this yet um and i think for the video i'm probably just going to put the trailer up and that is mario and luigi brothership so there's been a lot of i will admit i've seen there's been a lot of controversy about this um but i'll be honest i don't know what the controversy is um i've not really paid any attention to it but yeah as i say it was a mario game uh it was on the switch so yeah just immediately sort of uh put in the pre-order as soon as i could um and then yeah it uh it arrived basically uh so yeah from what i've seen of it it looks uh it looks like an okay game i'll be honest it doesn't really it basically it's another so another iteration of sort of a mario rpg uh but instead of you just having sort of the mario or just playing as mario um you're actually playing as sort of mario and luigi so yeah it looks like an interesting concept but from my perspective um i probably want to play through uh, mario rpg uh more than i do this one uh so this one paid 42.95 for that goes for 40 pounds at cex and 45 on ebay uh right next up so we've got the next two games that we've got actually come from strictly limited uh, and these are ones that i um yeah i just saw them sort of pop up in one of the email alerts and sort of decided to grab them i will admit i'm a bit miffed about this next one because about two weeks after i ordered it uh, it's actually a ps4 game uh but then they released the ps5 version but i will say after looking at it in a bit more detail um i couldn't have played it anyway so quite glad that i did get this one in the end and that is last labyrinth so yeah as i say they did release the ps5 version a couple of weeks later but that requires the psvr2 uh, which i don't currently have whereas this one just uses the original psvr and yeah this was a really really good game it's it's not designed as a long game at all and what you the the premise of the story is is you are uh, you're essentially playing a character that is um basically chained to a wheelchair and then this girl is you're basically directing this girl to uh, help you get out of this house basically uh, but you've got various uh, so essentially it's like uh, it's like a lighter version of saw so uh, i think one of the first rooms that you go into um, or one of the the first sort of routes that i took um, actually had is it the i think it had some spinning blades no it didn't it didn't it had a uh drop uh, uh, a crushing rock um essentially what you do is, is you're basically placed at one end of the room and then you use the um you actually you know you don't you you don't use the controller i, I was using the control the, the motion controllers but you the idea i think is is that you sit down while playing this game i was standing up and because obviously with vr i just tend to stand up uh so yeah i was uh, you're meant to sit down with it uh to sort of simulate that you're in the, the wheelchair and then what you do is, is you look around and as you look at things basically a laser sight comes up and when you sort of you click on something and then the girl will sort of walk over she'll point to it and she'll basically ask you a question but obviously it's not in english um and you you need to nod uh, so you can't respond verbally so you've essentially just got a nod and once you nod she will then do the action um so yeah it's a really interesting concept um and yeah i think when i was playing it probably ended up playing it for sort of close to an hour um, and i think i got i think there's something like seven different routes or uh seven uh yeah seven routes that you need to go and basically what happens is is if you so what you've got your starting room um then you've got like an, then another room and then from that room it splits off so you've got one room this side one room that side and 
you basically follow those. And then when you go into those two side rooms, once you go into either one of the side rooms, you've then got a puzzle in there that you need to complete. And then from there, you then escape. And But each time you play it, those rooms differ as well as the room in the middle. Uh, so I think by the sort of third or fourth um, run through, the door to this room was um, boarded up. So the only way you could go was this way. Um, and then you complete the puzzle um, and basically you get out. Um, so obviously those rooms will change each time you play. Uh, and yeah, there's basically, a, from what I can tell, there was about seven different routes. I probably went through and done four or five. Uh, so probably four actually, I think I've done. Because uh, there was a couple, I know there was a couple more left to do. Um, but yeah, really, really interesting game. Really interesting concept. And definitely one that I am going to go through and sort of play it through completely. The only disappointment I've got with this um, is I didn't realise when I bought it. Um, but this is actually the German version. Uh, so apart from sort of some, so like you've got Last Labyrinth on the front. And then the sort of caption on the back. Um, everything else is in German. Um, to be honest, it doesn't really matter because the game itself, all the menus are in English um, and in the actual game itself, the idea is, is that you're not meant to know uh, what the girl is saying. Uh, so, And she's the only one that actually um, speaks at all. So yeah, I, I, it was a really interesting one. Uh, definitely one I'd say if you've got a standard VR on a PS4, uh, definitely give it a go. Uh, so for that one, we pay £35.26. Uh, looking it up online, uh, it goes for... It's going for about £70 on eBay now. So yeah, done really well to pick that up when I did. All right, so this next one is probably one of the most talked about games uh, that I've been seeing on YouTube uh, recently. Uh, and I will admit, I did buy this uh, before... Um, I actually pre-ordered this, uh, so yeah, it was ordered uh, before everyone started talking about it. And that is Iron Meat. So this is a run and gun shooter, uh, very much in the style of uh, Contra. And yeah, I will admit, I totally agree with what everyone else is saying with this. It is an absolutely superb shooter. Um, really, really enjoyed playing it. Um, and actually, uh, just a couple of days before I filmed this, um, Strictly Limited uh, have actually released a um, sort of collector's edition type, uh, which basically comes with, I think it comes with an art book and an outer sleeve. Um, and yeah, what they've actually done, which I thought was absolutely superb, was they've actually given uh, people that have already bought the game uh, the option uh, to buy that outer sleeve and the art, and the art book. Um, so I think I, I've ordered it. I think it cost me like eight pound odd. Um, they've done free shipping on it. Um, they're not going to ship until January, but equally for an extra eight pound fifty, I've literally got the the complete edition. Uh, so yeah, really really impressed with what Stri Strictly Limited have done there, uh, because normally uh, you would just have to if you wanted that version, you would then have to just buy it again. Uh, so yeah, really, that is one of the best things that I've seen recently, um, any of these companies do. So for this one, we paid £30.65p. Uh, looking it up online, this now is going for £100. Uh, so because of everyone that's been talking about it, everyone now wants to get it. Uh, but obviously, it has been sold out on um, Strictly Limited. But obviously, now we've got the... Um, the sort of special edition something i can't remember what i actually called it um but yeah so that price might have dropped off a bit um if it has i will put it down the bottom if i don't put anything down the bottom uh it means it is still selling for about 100 pounds uh right so next up we are going to get into uh some of the bits that i picked up from the boot fair and uh, the first lot that we've actually got was, I think it was something that is either Nicky or the reseller um, that I know that was there uh, pointed out to me. Um, and this is a Wii bundle. So we've got the black uh, Wii, U, uh, Wii Sports Resort uh, console, which has got the Motion Plus controller in it. And then got a whole stack of games as well. 
so yeah, what we'll do is let's just dive in and start having a look at the games. Obviously, the console um, is all in there; it's all boxed, um, and because we've actually got this already in the collection, um, we've actually got the big version that comes with the um, the balance board. Uh, so I think we've got the Wii Fit version actually, um, or Wii, uh, yeah. I've yeah, it must be the Wii Fit version, because it's got the balance board. Uh, so, yeah, for this, to be quite honest, it's not something I'm looking to add to the collection, so it will get sold on. Uh, looking it up online, they go for £75 at CEX, um, £50, £50 at e on eBay, and a trade-in for a £50 voucher. So, yeah, I don't know, I might actually uh, take just trade it into CEX, but I just think that they will try and sort of bump me down on the price uh, because of the condition of the box. So, yeah, I don't know yet, don't know yet where I'm going to sell it, but, yeah, I will do at some point. And then, uh, yeah, so let's dive in and start looking at the game. So the first bundle that we've got um, are all going to be doubles, so I'm going to rifle through them quite quickly. So we've got uh, Wii Fit, the Disney Inf Disney Infinity, uh, basically 1.0, Monopoly, Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympics, Big uh, Big Beach Sports, Wii Play. We Fit Plus, Just Dance 2 with the Lantricular cover, and then the last double was uh, Samba de Amigo. Uh, so out of all of those, uh, the most expensive one is Mario and Sonic, um, and then we've got uh, Monopoly and uh, Just Dance. Uh, they go for 160 each, or 160 voucher. Uh, Sonic can get us a £3 voucher and then all the others are 30p apart from the um, Disney Infinity and uh, the original Wii Fit which um, don't act, CEX won't actually trade them in anymore uh, so yeah that's them and then moving on we've then got um, a small pile as well of ones that are new for the collection so we've got Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Um, I was really surprised we didn't have this, um, but when I actually looked, uh, we had uh, the, uh, the yellow case, um, but we didn't actually have the disc for it. So I think what I might actually do is I actually want the yellow case version. So I might actually take the disc out of this and put it into that. Uh, but yeah, uh, that one is four pounds at CEX, five pounds on eBay. Then we've got Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. Uh, this one goes for £3 at CEX, £5 on eBay. Um, and yeah, like with most of them, uh, they do. it does have a wide range of controllers that you can play it with. Uh, so you've obviously got the Wiimote and Nunchuck, the Wiimote and Steering Wheel, the Wii Pad, um, and also a, a GameCube Pad as well. So yeah. Um, that I will admit if I'm playing these on the Wii um, I do prefer to use the gamepad um, but equally uh, I don't have my Wii set up so I very rarely play these versions then we've got um, Disney Pixar's Ratatouille uh, so this one goes for £4 at CEX £3 on eBay then we've got Madagascar Carts uh, so we've recently got this. I uh, uh, can't remember what console it was. It's a Game Boy, one of the Game Boys, I think we've got it on. Uh, so yeah, obviously this is going to be a sort of slightly um, up-resed version of that. Uh, this one goes for four pounds of both CEX and eBay. Then we've got Sports Party, so another one of the sort of Wii Sports um, knockoff games. Uh, there's quite a few of these out on the Wii. And this one goes for £2 at CEX, £6 on eBay. TV show King Party. So this looks like it's got the ultimate quiz. So it looks like it's got different quizzes, Wheel of Fortune, and final jewel i don't know um but yeah it's basically sort of a 
sort of general knowledge sort of party game. Uh, that one goes for 75p at CEX, 250 on eBay. Uh, no, it doesn't. It goes for two pounds at CEX, three pounds on eBay. Then we've got Planet Rescue Wildlife Vet. <sighs> I don't know. It is just one that we don't have in the collection. Um, and that was the only reason for keeping it. Uh, that one does go for 75p at CEX, 250 on eBay. Then next up, we've got uh, Eleanor Whitaker's Horse Life. <sighs> Once again, <laughs> don't ask me, it was just in there. Uh, that one goes for 150 at CEX, six pounds on eBay. And then the final game that we've got that we're going to be adding to the collection is Cooking Mama. Uh, this one goes for £6 at CEX and £5 on eBay. But there was a couple more uh, discs in there as well. Uh, we did also get a cardboard copy of uh, Wii Sports and a cardboard copy of Wii Sports Resort. Uh, we've got both of these in the collection already, so these are going to be traded in to CEX. Um, and uh, Wii Sports will get us a £6 voucher. Wii Sports Resort will get us a £5 voucher. Okay, so uh, we've got a couple more bits to go. Uh, and then, actually, we are going to be finishing the video off with uh, my absolute dream pickup. Uh, this has been a game that I've been after for absolutely ages. Uh, and, yeah, really, really glad to finally have it in the collection uh, but before we get to that um, I've got a stack of games that we actually picked up from one of the resellers that I know uh, that was actually selling at the boot fair um, and yeah he had literally a whole box full of PS1 games um, and he was literally sort of he was dishing them out really cheap um, and yeah he done me a really good deal on uh, the whole stack or a whole stack, sorry, not the whole stack. So the first one that we've got is the Atari uh, Anniversary uh, Redu Anniversary Edi Edition Redux. Um, so this has got a whole range of uh, original Atari games uh, from sort of Asteroids, uh, what else was on here? Tempest, Centipede, Missile Commander, or Missile Command, sorry. Um, and yeah, just a battle zone, a whole load. And actually, I will admit, I've really enjoyed playing this uh, to capture the footage. Uh, there's a couple of games that I've probably only played sort of once or twice in my life. And yeah, just really enjoyed getting back to sort of classic gaming, shall we say. Uh, so for that one, we paid £4. Uh, it goes for £6 at CEX and £5 on eBay. Um, and actually, I think all of the PS1 games that we've got um, are complete with their manuals. Then next up, we've got Railroad Tycoon 2. Um, I will be honest, um, I sort of put this in and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Um, yeah, it was very much sort of just go gung-ho, get in, play it and sort of move on. Um, it, with me, it is a game that I've been wanting to play but I think it's definitely more suited to uh, the PC than it is uh, something like the PlayStation. So yeah, while I'm happy to have it in the collection, it's probably not going to be one that I'm going to play too often. Uh, so this one paid £4 for that. Couldn't find it listed at CEX, but goes for £10 on eBay. Uh, then we've got a couple of other games. So that uh, was a bundle that I actually uh, agreed to get off him uh, before the boot fair started. And then... Uh, once the boot fair started, I then actually got a, another load off him. So the, the other game that I got was Mario Tennis Open uh, on the 3DS. So I really like the Mario Tennis games. Uh, got a couple of them across different systems. Uh, so yeah, really happy to have this one. Uh, this one, we paid £4 for that. Goes for £5 at CEX, £8 on eBay. And then the other one that we got was Sonic Colors on the Wii. Um, we paid £3 for that, goes for £5 at CEX, £7 on eBay. And then we get into the other bundle that I picked up from him. So this was one that, um, as he was setting up, I was looking through what he had. Uh, and then, yeah, decided to grab these as well. Uh, so the first one that we've got is Grand Theft Auto 2. Uh, 
Um, I believe we've got the black label of this already. Uh, I'm going to double check. If we have, uh, I am going to trade this one in uh, to CEX. Uh, so we paid £4.38 for it. Uh, it goes for £15 at CEX, £7, £17 on eBay, um, and trades in for a £6 voucher. No, I'm going to sell this one on eBay, actually. Uh, yeah. So if we have got the black label, uh, I'm going to trade that one in. I'm pretty sure we have, uh, because... I think this was one that I sort of sorted out on, um, or sought out on eBay. Uh, so yeah, I think I, I wouldn't have bought the um, the platinum version uh, off of eBay. Uh, and then the next, all, all the rest are all being added uh, to the collection. So next up, we've got Return Fire. Um, and yeah, this was a bit of a weird one. So this is, you're basically a, you're sort of driving around a tank. It's sort of top down. And obviously, I, I literally, once again, just went in there, um, straight into the level. Didn't really sort of read any of the uh, briefings or anything like that. Um, sort of drove along, blew up this structure, uh, and then a little flag appeared. And you got like music to sort of signify that you'd sort of done it but the level didn't actually finish so i don't know what else i needed to do uh to get the level to finish uh but yeah as i say from what i did play of it it looks like it could be a good game uh i just need to sort of learn what i need to do to actually sort of wrap up the level uh so that one we paid uh four pounds and 37 p goes for 15 pounds at cex 18 pounds on ebay then the next games we've got, um, they're all going to be Platinums. Uh, but the first one that we've got is Crash Bandicoot, which I will admit um, I have probably only played once uh, before playing this. Uh, it's not a game that I've ever had. Uh, so yeah, when I saw that he had, all, had them there, um, I decided to grab it and really happy to have it in the collection. Unfortunately, it is only the Platinum version, so I, I will still try and seek out the Black Label when I can. Uh, so for this one, we paid £4.37 again, goes for £20 at CEX and £15 on eBay. And to go with that, we've also got Crash Bandicoot 2, uh, the Cortex, or, well, Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. Um, this one goes for, once again, paid £4.37 for it. Uh, it goes for, where am I looking, £10 at CEX, uh, £12 on eBay. And yeah, once again, main reason for buying this was to go with the original Crash Bandicoot. And then following that up, we then also got Crash Bandicoot 3. Uh, this is Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. Uh, once again, it is the Platinum version. So I've, I think the good thing is, is I've got all three of them in Platinum. Uh, so they will all go together. Uh, but yeah, I do still want to seek out the black labels. Uh, so once again, £4.37 paid for this one. Uh, it goes for £8 at CEX, £10 on eBay. And then the last couple of games that we got from the reseller. Uh, next one is going to be an Xbox One game. And that is Mortal Kombat XL. Uh, so this is actually uh, Mortal Kombat 10. Uh, but it is essentially the game of the year edition. So it comes with um, all of the sort of DLC characters. Uh, so from the footage that you're seeing, uh, I think I was playing as the Predator. Um, and yeah, it basically you had Predator, um, Jason Voorhees, uh, the, the alien was in there. Uh, there was a whole load of sort of movie characters. Leatherface. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, definitely an interesting lineup. Um, but yeah, it is basically the complete lineup for um, Mortal Kombat 10. Uh, yeah, we've also we have got the original Mortal Kombat in the collection. Um, but obviously, this one does have everything on the disc, which is good. Uh, so for that one, we paid uh, four pounds and thirty-eight p. Goes for eight pounds at CEX, nine pounds on eBay. And then we also got an X, another Xbox One game. This time it is Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series. Uh, so this is a, um, I believe this is, from playing it, seems like it's based after the um, the first Guardians film. 
Uh, obviously, the the, char the the characters within the game uh, all have a different art style, and none of them have the uh, the Marvel uh, actors in it. Um, it's all new new actors um, and new likenesses. But yeah, I will admit it was really good to play. It was definitely one of those ones that I'm going to go back to. I have to admit, I'm a big fan of the uh, Telltale games. So I think the first game of theirs that I ever played was the Jurassic Park game. Then I went on and done Back to the Future. I've dipped in and out of The Walking Dead. Um, and I believe I've got some of their other ones as well. Um, I've also got some of their non-story games. So uh, Night at... The, the poker games. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, Night at the something. Um, and yeah, as I say, uh, when I got this, it was really good. Um, uh, the only concern I've got with this, obviously, is the Season Pass disc. Uh, so it probably doesn't include... Uh, No, it doesn't say that I need to download the others. Um, so there was, I will admit, I did see the other um, episodes uh, when the game was installing. So I don't know if that is basically the full game has been installed or if that's just like install prompts. So I need to look into that a bit more. But yeah, still glad to have it in the collection. Uh, this one we paid 4 38 again. Goes for £8 on CEX, £10 on eBay. And then the last game that I picked up off this collector, uh, off the, sorry, off the reseller, was Warriors of Rome 2 on the Genesis. So luckily this is one that will play in PAL consoles. Um, to be honest, most of the Genesis games that I've come across will play in PAL consoles. And if they don't, literally the way you get around it is... Uh, I well I actually say that I've yeah I can't think of any that I've actually played that I didn't fit in I think I've got I might have a couple um, but yeah I think most of the Genesis games that I've got all just plug straight into the console and I don't have any problems uh, this one was the same uh, so this is basically a um, Roman based strategy game um, and yeah it was it was all right I'll be honest, the main reason for picking it up was that it was a um, Mega Drive game uh, that we didn't have. Uh, even though it's a Genesis, um, it was it was still play on the Mega Drive. Um, so for this one, paid 4 38 for that. Couldn't see it listed at CEX. Well, it won't be listed because obviously it's a Genesis game. Uh, but on eBay, it goes for about £18. So yeah, we've got a really good deal with that one. And then the final bit that I did get off of this reseller, this isn't a game, but it is gaming related. And that is the Assassin's Creed Syndicate, um, Assassin's Gauntlet. Uh, so yeah, I saw this there and I was umming and ahhing for a little while on it. Um, but yeah, in the end up, I did just grab it because uh, I thought it would be, I, I'd find somewhere for it. Obviously I don't really have a lot of Assassin's Creed stuff um, in the collection. Uh, so I think that was the other reason for picking it up. Uh, so for this, we paid £20 for it. Looking it up online, they go for about £50 on eBay. Um, it is complete. It's got all of the inserts and everything in there. Um, so yeah, really happy to have this. And then yeah, I'm hoping at some point, I don't know, I think I'm just going to get sort of shelves that hang down from the ceiling at this point. But yeah, glad to have this in the collection. Um, and yeah, not something that I see every day. So yeah, that was the big reason for picking it up. Then the last pickup from the boot fair was actually something uh, that I actually got off Nikki. So um, when we got to the boot fair, uh, Nikki was selling that day as well. Um, and uh, both Nikki and the reseller uh, both went off and started looking about um sort of for bits to pick up um i was very much in a mindset no i'm going to get set up i want to sell i don't want to buy um and yeah in the end that completely went to pot when <laughs> all of this got brought back to me um but yeah nikki did find this um and i will admit it was so cool that i did end up picking it up and that is a playstation watch so yeah it is um, from what i can tell looking at the obviously the back is all in japanese uh so it looks like that it was uh, there was a series of these and that was all released um in japan 
Uh, but yeah, this one just looked absolutely stunning. Really liked it with basically the, just a black face, the PlayStation logo, and then actually if you turn the watch uh, the watch face to certain points, you can actually see that you've got the PlayStation symbol um, on the back of the like within the black uh, part of the face. So yeah, really, really nice, uh, and uh, one that I was happy to get off him. Because when we were looking it up, we were getting prices all over the shop. Uh, we couldn't actually see this exact design. Um, since getting home, I was able to do a bit more research, found this one. Um, so I mean, the one that we were initially looking at, they were going for about £90. Um, but when I found, I actually found this one in the end. Um, and then they're selling for about £50 on eBay. Uh, Nicky gave me a great deal on this. He gave me it for £20. Uh, I think that was a bit over what he paid for it, which suits me to a T. Uh, because it's not something I've seen before um, and definitely something that I will work into one of the PlayStation shelves. Okay, so next up, we are going to move on to the big pickup for today. Um, and it is so big that I have actually filmed opening the box uh, separately. So yeah, this arrived um, and I didn't want to wait until filming this to actually open the box just in case there was any problems with it. Uh, because yeah, this is a massive heavy hitter for me. Um, it has been sort of top of my sort of to get list for couple of, for years now. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to the footage that I filmed uh, just after it arrived and then yeah, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so now we've got to the part of the video that I have been really looking forward to and we are going to be cracking open the box with the grail in and yeah, for me, this is a game that I have, it's pretty much been top of my list since I started collecting. Um, yeah, cannot believe that I've got it. I hope, I'm praying that everything is all right with it. Um, I haven't even opened the box yet. I wanted to do it all on camera. So let's get the box open and keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, as I say, this has been the one game that I have really wanted for the collection over and above everything else. Okay, so we've got another envelope inside. <laughs> oh, it looks perfect. It really does. <laughs> okay. Right. It is. And... I really, I've only ever seen this game once before and that was when I went over to, um, just after I started the channel, I went over to Essex to pick up a massive, uh, I think it was a big PS2 bundle uh, from a collector over there and he had this game and at the time wasn't really that au okay with it but okay. I'm not going to keep you in suspense any longer. So, the game that we've managed to finally get hold of is Rule of Rose. I cannot believe that I'm holding a copy of this, let alone, as you can see, a sealed copy of Rule of Rose. So, yeah, this is... Uh, what makes this even more special is the fact that this is the, uh, the UK release so with Rule of Rose, um, it had a massive, there was massive controversies when it was being released. And before it was actually put on sale, uh, the UK actually banned the game. So it never got a UK release. Um, but obviously it was banned so late in the development of the game that all of the games were actually produced. And recently, 
um, the price of Rule of Rose has been absolutely plummeting. Uh, reason for that is, is the developer uh, 505 uh, actually released, uh, actually sold off a load of games from their Italian warehouse. Um, and in there, there was European and UK copies of Rule of Rose. So, yeah, it has absolutely plummeted in price. Uh, what my actual plan was with this was um, the recent C, I think it's a recent one. We've done it or it's going to be coming soon. Um, but the recent CEX trip, the uh, what I was actually aiming to do was collect my vouchers up to actually get this game. Uh, so yeah, I was going to have it in the collection soon anyway, but the fact that the eBay price has literally gone uh, over a hundred pound below what CEX are charging for a mint copy of this. Now, the problem with CEX is obviously there have been a lot of people that have been trading this into CEX. Um, what they've been doing is they've been picking it up. Um, then taking it into CEX. So what CEX are now doing is they've now got their trading price lower than the eBay price. I think last time I checked, a mint copy of this was was trading for three hundred pounds. Um, but yeah, I was I was watching one of the other YouTubers the other week, and uh, they were saying that they were actually in a CEX when someone was coming in to trade this in, and apparently the staff were really sort of hesitant to actually take it. And then when they did take it, they then undone the cellophane. <laughs> and I'm like, I literally, as I was watching the video, I was like, no! <laughs> and I was like, yeah. So, yeah, as you can probably guess, I am going to keep my copy of Rule of Rose sealed. Um, I do have a ROM of this, um, but I've not, never actually played it. Uh, so, yeah, I am I'm going to keep this sealed. I've got a uh, box protector to put it in as well. Uh, so, yeah, I am yeah not going to touch the disc. Um, it was ne Whenever I got this, um, it was always going to be a case of I am not going to be playing the disc. Um, didn't actually didn't ever realise that I would ever get a, a sealed copy of Rule of Rose, let alone a copy of Rule of Rose. So... Yeah, absolutely over the moon, and it is, it's perfect. I was so worried that it would, there'd be something wrong with it, that it would, but yeah, it, it is just spot on, it's exactly what I wanted. So, the burning question, what did I pay for it? Uh, so, as I say, the price of Rule of Rose has been absolutely plummeting recently. Um, and on, I think, go back about six to eight weeks, uh, a copy, a sealed copy of the UK edition of Rule of Rose would have set you back probably 600 to to £1,000. Uh, I managed to pick this copy up for £349. Yes, that is a monumental price for a PS2 game. But, as I say, it ha it was literally my um, top grail. Out of all of the games uh, that I want for the collection, uh, getting a copy, a UK copy of Rule of Rose for the collection has been my number one goal for absolutely years now. So, yeah, absolutely over the moon. Unfortunately, didn't manage to pick it up at the boot fair for a pound, but I will take what I can get. <laughs> Um, so yes, uh, I will admit I am filming this video separately uh, to the rest of the video uh, just purely because I wanted to actually get this opened as soon as it arrived uh, so that I could double check it, make sure everything's okay um, and then instead of leaving it, I think the this video is probably it's a couple of months away from me f filming this part to when this video actually comes out so um, yeah, I, I just wanted to get this open, get it checked um, and just show you my reaction to opening it. I am, I'm just over the moon. I really am. It has, this is, a, for me, this is a massive collection goal. It really is. Um, with so some of the recent additions that we've had, obviously we had Pokemon Gale of Darkness uh, earlier on in the year. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we added Snatcher. Uh, last year, we added, I think it was last year or the year before, uh, we added Conker's Bad Fur Day, and now I've ticked off, finally ticked off Rule of Rose. Um, yeah, I, I'm i literally over the moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut back to the other portion of the video, 
uh, and then what we'll do is we'll run through the totals um, and what I'll do is is just before I film that part of the video um, I will go through and I will get the um, the current selling price for this game uh, when I film the video so as I say that's going to be in about two months time from when I'm filming this uh, but it'll give you a bit more of an accurate representation I'm hoping it won't go down um, but equally I am not not really concerned either way because I know that it will go down in the short term but it'll definitely go back up again um, so yeah if it's one that you want to add for your collection um, and you're able to definitely definitely try and get it now uh, while the price is slipping uh, because I do think it will be one that will go back up in price uh, especially the UK version uh, because it was never actually released but yeah so yeah what I'm going to do is jump back to the other video and then yeah we'll run through the totals so yes rule of rose I am I will admit, even now, I this so I probably had this now for coming close to about two months, and yeah, I've literally had it sitting on this shelf um, since I picked it up. And then every time I'm filming a video, I move it out a shot. Um, but yeah, it's been sat on that shelf ever since I picked it up. Um, and as you can see, I have got a um, an acrylic case for it. Um, and it is still sealed. Um, it's going to stay like that. Um, but yeah, sitting here and sort of seeing it sitting on the shelf um, has been absolutely amazing. Um, it was, as I said, that, as I said in the um, when we were opening it, it's not a game that I ever thought that I would have. And I'll tell you what, I'm just going to put it down there. <laughs> um, yeah, the first time that I ever saw it, I, I think I said it in the uh, in the bit was um yeah went to that collector's over in essex um he had a copy there it was the copy that he had was actually the european copy um because obviously the uk copy was banned um yeah because of an italian writer writing a um, an article about the game that was completely not true he uh the uk government basically panicked and just banned it outright before it was released so yeah uh, sort of 505 had all of these games ready to go um, and i couldn't do anything with it until now and it has basically been one of the biggest gaming bits of news this year um so yeah i am absolutely over the moon uh for actually finally having this in the collection um i'll be honest i don't know how i'm going to display it because um i don't want to put it on the ps uh, with the ps2 games because those games are towards the bottom of the shelving unit, but don't think it will go on the PS4 shelves, which are the only ones, are the only place really that it will go with a play with some PlayStation games. Because even like my PlayStation games are currently in the bookcase behind the camera, and they basically take up the bottom half of the bookcase. So yeah, I I am thinking of doing a big big sort out in here um i'll be honest the room itself is an absolute mess um i've just got piles and piles of stuff behind the camera that's one of the reasons why i've started filming this way is because i've just got so much stuff in the room uh, that i can't actually get to the uh, the other bookcases so i think what i'm going to do is i am over in the next couple of weeks uh, we're going to have a big sort out um, and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to look at how I want to rearrange the the three main bookcases so um, what I'm thinking is, is I am actually thinking of having it sort of instead of going across like it does now have the game sort of going uh, vertically that way I could essentially do what we've done here uh, with the Xbox shelf and actually have a PlayStation bookcase a sega bookcase a nintendo bookcase um obviously i think with the sega what we got two four six so we wouldn't necessarily have a full book uh, well i don't know because obviously looking at the bookcases now we're nearly up to four shelves with the mega drive uh, but i've only got three shelves at the moment so i do really want to sort of spread that out so i might i am thinking seriously about it as well I might take out the DS uh, because, yeah, um, I just think 
it's not really something that I play. Um, and yeah, I think for now I might take out the DS just to give us another shelf uh, for the Mega Drive. But yeah, I am going to look into it. I'm going to sort of sit down over the next couple of weeks, have a sort of planning session as to sort of how I want to lay it out. And then yeah, um, I will sort of, we'll jump on, we'll do a video. Um, I've also got another plan as well. So um, just under my desk here, um, at the moment I've got sort of a, uh, a big cardboard box, a load of stuff piled on top of it. And it's all basically my um, game guides. So what I'm actually thinking about doing is actually custom building a um, two shelf unit to actually go under here um, and put all my game guides, my magazines and everything on. Uh, just so that I've actually got somewhere to go. Uh, so yeah, that is also something that I'll probably look to do in that video as well. Um, and then yeah, it is just going to be a case of just sorting everything out, sorting through it, uh, because like the uh, so PlayStation One um, is sort of doubled up, and I've got a, a whole box filled with PlayStation One games. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to go through, sort them out, so that we can have basically, um, as a lot of other people say, all killer, no filler um, for uh, the games that we've got in the shelves. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got a couple of plans that I'm sort of working on. Um, I think there's also going to be, the PlayStation shelf is definitely going to get some work as well. Um, what I've also had to do as uh, with the console boxes, so... Um, up until recently, we've had all the console boxes sort of front facing. Um, I've actually had to start sort of putting them on the sides um, and stacking them, just like we've done with the uh, all the Xbox Ones up top here, um, just because we've got so many boxed consoles now um, that I just didn't have the room uh, to put them in all front facing, uh, which is a bit of a shame, but as I say, it is what it is. Um, I think the only ones that we've got front facing at the moment are the, um, the Sega shelf uh, and the, I think the only reason that I've got it like that is purely because I don't think the shelf that I've got up there would put, I'd be able to put anything more on it uh, without it giving out because it's only one of these sort of floating shelves. Uh, so yeah, um, as I say, there are a lot of changes that I want to make to the games room, especially before um, next year when we do the next games room tour. Uh, I definitely want to sort of get the place uh, in order um, and yeah, and, uh, get it under control a bit, shall we say. So with that, um, actually, before we go to the totals, actually, one thing uh, I have forgot to do is to give you the prices for Rule of Rose. So I can't remember whether I told you how much I paid for it, um, but um, as I say, I got it off eBay, paid £349 for it. Um, and yeah, I am more than happy with that price. Uh, so looking it up online, um, it goes for four four hundred and thirty pounds at CEX. Um, that is the, uh, the UK version, like what we've got um, in mint condition. Now, what I will say is um, I have looked at some other people's uh, videos and they have been sort of doing CEX hunts. And I have actually seen that CEX have started keeping these sealed. So I'm assuming they are still selling it as the sort of mint, uh, mint price, um, but they are now not unsealing it uh, when, it uh, when it comes into them. So at least we've got that, at least that's the positive. Um, and then looking it up online, um, it has dropped off a bit on eBay. Um, it's now selling for £315 on eBay. But once again, um, I'm not bothered. I'm really happy with what I paid for it. Um, and yeah, it will take pride of place in the collection. So before we wrap up, let's quickly run through the totals. So our total spend today was £642.45p. If we bought everything we could from CEX, it would have been a total price of £863.25p. And if we got everything from eBay, we'd be looking at £1,286.50p. So yeah, a really good deal we've got on everything. Um, really cheap, um, probably half the price of, uh, yeah, basically half the price of what we pay on eBay, which is really good. Um, and then if we choose to trade in all of the doubles that we've got, um, like both the consoles, um, all the Wii games, uh, we would look to get a £74.40p voucher. So yeah, really, really good there, really happy. 
and now I am going to go and start getting all this sorted. So before you head off, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit this like, hit the like button, and if you're not already, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell to be kept up to date when I upload new videos. And yeah, with that said, thank you so so much for watching today. Really hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, bye.